Tonight, an amazing medical breakthrough is giving hope to people paralyzed by injuries. Truly, for the first time, a paralyzed man has moved his hand and fingers by using his thoughts. CBS 2's Dr. Max Gomez shows us how it happened and what it means for the future of medicine. Starting in three, two, one. The laboratory Ian Burkhart sat in was crowded and small, but what he did there was enormous. Good. 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 In an unprecedented demonstration, the 23-year-old, who suffered a spinal cord injury four years ago diving into a wave in the ocean, became the first patient ever to move a paralyzed hand by using his own thoughts something even his doctors were awed by. But for Ian, this is really all about the simplicities of life. Picking up a cup of water and drinking it, or brushing your teeth, or feeding yourself, you know, those things, if you can do those on your own, makes a big difference in your life. It took dozens of experts and groundbreaking surgery. Just over two months ago, neurosurgeon Ali Razai of the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center implanted a tiny chip in Ian's brain. The surgery was an important part in terms of being able to precisely put this microchip in the area that controls the arm and the hand movements. The team at Ohio State work with engineers from Battelle, who develop software and algorithms, as well as this high-tech sleeve. Called NeuroBridge technology, the system reads Ian's thoughts, processes them, and in less than a tenth of a second, sends signals to his hand to move. Uh, we're taking those signals from the brain, going around the injury, and actually going directly to the muscles. Other technologies have used robotics or computers to move muscles, but this is the first to use a patient's mind. And if you ask Ian's dad, they couldn't have found a mind more suited for the challenge. You know, God chooses people for different uh, roles here, and he certainly chose the right person with Ian. Now, doctors hope to test the NeuroBridge technology in four other patients in this initial study. Eventually, they plan to build a wireless version that might also help stroke or traumatic brain injury patients. Christine? Absolutely amazing, Dr. Max. Thank you.